Hey everyone, welcome back to the Nintendo Prime Podcast, episode 105. I am your host as always, Nathaniel Ruffle Jans, joined to my left and your right by... Eric Moore. And we are excited. We got three biggish topics to talk about. Um, maybe some controversial topics. We'll, we'll see kind of how it goes. Um, before we get into that, you can find our podcast on iTunes, Podbean, Google Play through the Google Podcast app, NintendoPrime.net, and as always, on Patreon through patreon.com slash Nintendo Prime. In fact, for $20 a month, you can be on an episode of the podcast once per month. $10 a month, you get to actually watch us record the podcast. $5 a month, you get a day early access to the audio version. Otherwise, our podcast always goes live publicly on YouTube at 10 a.m. Central Standard Time. Now, on Mondays. Did I say Monday? I don't yeah. Know. Anyways. <sighs> We got some topics, man. Yeah, yeah. Uh, first, let's get into one that God, it feels like we're beating a dead horse. Yeah. Switch Mini, Switch Pro, Switch something. <laughs> um, this past week, a new report came out at Nikkei, Japanese publication. And this new report really said two, well, three things. One, the, the Switch Mini mm-hmm. is, or whatever it's called, Switch Lite, whatever, <laughs> will be here um, this fall. And... It will be dockable, so you will be able to dock it. Mm-hmm. Okay, that's just what they're they're claiming. Yeah, uh, Nikkei is a Japanese publication, and so they are closer to where things are being made. So who knows? I don't know if that provides any more context. They've been writing about stuff in the past, but um, next, this is one that's really interesting. So the more powerful switch will be coming after the Switch Mini, so they're not released at the same time. Mm-hmm. We don't know what after means. Um, could be winter 2019, but it's probably in 2020, my assumption. But they're specifically calling it a next generation switch that will replace the current switch. Huh. All right. Which is interesting because yeah. the mini's not being called that, so it might replace the current switch, but then the mini, you could argue, replaces the current switch, especially if it's still dockable. It's just yeah. smaller. Anyway, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The point is that they are suggesting that this is a much bigger upgrade or maybe even a whole new generation of switch um and oh just saying that out loud what is that like how do you feel saying next gen switch 2020 i don't know i i don't know how you can really go next gen switch besides making things just more powerful well that's i mean usually what next generation yeah, is yeah it's just more powerful hardware yeah it's just when and things are called next gen, it's because it's usually a significant leap. Yeah, that, I mean that'd be nice as long as they fix again some of the problems. Well, sure, that we've, I, some, we've caused, some design we've seen. things will be fixed, but I think like when I hear next gen, which for starters, I love technology, so I'm just tickled, tickled my fancy. But I also think the current switch is going to be what three years old, yeah, th- a little bit over three years by the time we get to when this one might potentially be coming out. That's not very long to talk about, oh, a next gen that replaces that. Mm-hmm. Right. Now, if it was just a Switch Pro, that's fine. Three years in, right. an upgrade, mid gen upgrade. That's cool. Right, right, yeah. But this is like, no, not a mid gen, an end gen upgrade. <laughs> like, we're just done with the gen. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's. I wonder, though, like, I've talked in the past about how phones, right? Mm-hmm. Yearly upgrades. Every other year for Apple, it's like a new generation of Apple fi- devices. Mm-hmm. I'm wondering if instead of looking at this like a traditional new generation, like the PlayStation 5 coming out mm-hmm. or the Xbox 2 or whatever, uh, maybe we're looking at it wrong in how we think about next gen. Because a next generation of Switch, it might be a significant bump. It might be a completely custom chipset, fully backwards compatible, uses the same cartridges uh, and all that stuff. But... What if it's more like phones, where it's like, okay, so this comes out, and that leads to phasing out the old one, but in general, everything's probably still going to work on that old one for the next two to three years that right. comes out, out on the platform. Yeah. It just happens to be um, that they do not going to make that platform anymore. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, that's definitely a possibility. Because I, the more I think about it, the more I'm like, well, that one that can make the OG Switch kind of a collector's item, especially yeah. if you have one of the special edition ones. Which, yeah. by the way, we're giving away one of those. <laughs> uh, the Super Smash Bros. Ultimate well Bundle Edition. Uh, Gleam I link down in the description. But I I, I just, I'm, my thoughts on this are kind of all over the place. Like, I'm excited, but then I'm like, I see why people might be worried, because what if it gets exclusive games? Right. Um, and, like, are they doing this because of PlayStation 5? Because we heard some specs for that. But then my whole thought process is I don't think there is a good response for PlayStation 5 for Nintendo 
because PlayStation mm-hmm. 5 is going to be using like the new Ryzen processors. Mm-hmm. It's using the new Navi GPUs with ray tracing and um, some new, um, some I shouldn't say new SSD technology, but it's upcoming SSD technology that's that likely supports the new PCIe 4.0 standard. That's why they're so much faster because PCIe mm-hmm. 4.0 is going to be much faster. Right. And this all sounds great and dandy, but there's nothing you can do as a tablet to come anywhere close. Mm-hmm. So, sure, they can build one that surpasses PlayStation 4 in power and maybe get it to us for 400 Yeah. But, but at that point, like, but the PlayStation 5 destroys the base PlayStation 4. Yeah, It'll be a bigger yeah, gap than the current PlayStation 4 and Switch has. So, uh, to me, like, it can't be a response no. if this is real. Because, no, right, right. Well, your response is, oh, hey, we're giving you a more powerful version of what you already have. But, hey, by the way, it still gets wrecked and you're still not going to get third-party games, so... <laughs> I guess the question should be what is what do you see as the point to release a more powerful switch basically in year four of I, switch the technology is there sure and we've as we've noted the switch does have its edu- issues oh well, yeah there, there's so, a lot of issues but I'm just talking about games games wise what's the I, point I don't of the new hardware because the, the more powerful hardware it, that that's like right. fixing any of the, all the issues we talk about are little things that right can, right right no, 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 right but power that that's games right it directly affects games yeah so right like, right right I, the Nintendo games don't ever seem to need the power correct the the thing is I if you can somehow convince third parties that you can now run you know I mean even though you can now. You can run their games to a little bit higher quality. Maybe they're looking at the quality and maybe it's just borderline on where they see their games being in the quality that they want. And maybe that's why they don't want to bring it to Switch. But if you can have just that much more power and get the quality just that much better, maybe you might see some well, some some, some third, more third-party games jump on. I mean, the, the most obvious reason is obviously third parties, like trying to get more AAA games. And... <sighs> I'm just going to be honest. Like, this week we heard that Jedi Fallen Order, no surprise, is not coming to Switch. Mm-hmm. Um, no one really expected it to, but, you know, they didn't announce platforms when they announced it, so you kind of hoped. But it, I don't know that just having a more powerful Switch is going to get us those games. Because I think part of the reason we don't get all the AAA games on Switch isn't just power. Right. I think it's reputation. I think it's companies it's- don't think their games will sell. Because the bottom line is... If a company thinks their game will sell on your platform, they don't care what the hardware is. They will make it work on that platform. We're seeing this with a lot of console games now trying to go to mobile phones because they think they can get more money from you know yeah. a market that has billions of users, mm-hmm. which is understandable. You figure billions of users, you got to be able to make enough sales off that market. Right. But I'm just not sure what this is supposed to mean in general. Right. I just think that the next-gen thing is just... I'm confused. Yeah, I, I like. If it, it almost feels unbelievable, to to be completely honest. Yeah. Mid gen upgrades is something Nintendo's done many times. Right, right, right. Yeah, for sure. They did it way back in the NES days. Mm-hmm. But this. And why are people like? If this is true, why are people freaking out? I I don't know. The, the freaking out part I don't understand. That part I don't get at all. Well, period. I think it's it, well. Maybe it's because they're too used to traditional generations. I buy my system, I play everything for five to six years. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, you're right. I guess the so the whole, you know, of if they get if it gets console exclu- console exclusive games, then yeah, I can kind of see where your panic is at. But I don't, I don't see that happening. Then again, it is Nintendo. Well, it's not going to get Nintendo exclusive. Not like not their major games. Not right. for a while. Right. Um, but I mean, obviously, you know, we talked about it was third parties would mm-hmm. be the reason to right. upgrade the power. For sure. But if we're literally about to get PlayStation Five, like, doesn't that feel like a Wii U situation again? <laughs> kind of. Well, hey, look, we're releasing something that's as powerful as the current gen that's being replaced in a few months. Very true. Um, you now, granted, this is a lot more appeal than the Wii U ever did, and already has right. an audience, right. so that helps. But I know you said that. Um, the power may not be a draw for third-party games, and that that it, it's kind of more of a I can't remember exactly what the, what you said, 
um, more of a God, what did you say? Short term memory loss. Yeah. Oh God, I, my short term memory is terrible. But um, it, it uh, whatever you said. My question is: Is do you think it's the reputation of Nintendo as well? Because what they've done to third parties in the past. Probably. I think I think a lot of third parties don't come because of the because of the reputation. Um, like even even when you think about it, right? They NBA two K eighteen and nineteen have come, FIFA mm-hmm. eighteen and nineteen, um, you know, Wolfenstein and Doom, and they've obviously sold okay enough to keep bringing more of them for now. Mm-hmm. But is that going to be true when next gen hits? I don't know because we're not typically when games are selling extremely well on a platform, the publishers tout how well the sales are doing at the quarterly reports and they're not touting how well the switch sales are doing which tells you they're probably not doing as well as the other systems they'll mm-hmm. be like oh yeah we sold three million on xbox but like oh yeah it, it did better than expectations on switch well, what were your expectations right better than expectations well it wasn't three million then but but the thing is though is that if it's better than expectations that well, still what... means better than expectations that still means it's selling better than you thought it would or, Isn't that a good or thing? Or it's just a positive buzzword so investors don't freak out that you blew all your money on a Switch version. <laughs> I mean, that's possible. But still, I, I see that as it's better than thought of, you know, so which is a good thing. So, I mean, if your expectations are here and you sell here, how is that a bad thing? Because even with it being higher than expectations... If you don't see growth year over year, like NBA 2K, like say 2K19 sold worse, why would you bring the next one? I've argued in the past, right, that like getting full AAA support on Switch would require the AAA games that do come to sell well. And to me, selling well would have to be a number you can't ignore. Mm -hmm. So a million, million copies, Mm -hmm. can't ignore a million. You can ignore 500000 if it's selling 8 $9 million on the other platforms. What's yeah. the point? That 500000 might not be worth the investment to you. But if you're selling a million units, like Call of Duty was doing consistently in Wii back in the day, that's why they kept bringing every Call of Duty to Wii, for crying out yeah. loud. Because yeah. it kept selling a million. Right. So like you can't ignore an audience of a million people. That's just throwing money away. Very true. Like Very these, true. But we're talking about games that aren't indie games. So they can look at 500,000 copies of selling of anything and be like, oh, that's nothing. And they'll, then they'll look at, well, what third-party, you know, triple-A game, you know, what was really killing it? Oh, Octopath Traveler at 1.5 million. That didn't have a huge budget. You could argue it's not even triple-A. Right. So why invest all this money in that? We could just make smaller experiences like that that'll sell more that costs us a lot less money to make. Like Square Enix I mean, probably looks at it as, Man, look at the budget on this. It sold 1.5 million. Oh, we'll port all the old Final Fantasy games over, but we're not giving you the new one. We're not giving you the full Final Fantasy 15. Mm-hmm. The amount of money it's going to cost us to port it, compared to how many we can just sell of making another Bravely Default or another Octopad Traveler that's way cheaper. Why would we do that? Fair enough. And now Octopad yeah. Traveler had the advantage it was an exclusive, and obviously at the time when you are an exclusive to a platform, you kind of get extra advertising from. You know, right. the platform, right. and uh, that helps. And, and being well, an exclusive will usually helps with sales on an individual platform because you can't buy it anywhere else. Right. But still, you keep seeing more success stories like that. You see the Mario yeah. plus Rabbids Kingdom battles being touted as a success, and I bet you that sold more than any other AAA game has sold on Switch, multi-platform game on Switch. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, the only other games that are perform really, really well from the AAA are the free-to-play, like Fortnite, because it's free. Right. So, of right, course right. it's going to do well. Of right. course it's going to be installed on more than half the Switches out there, which is like, you know, 15, 16, 17 million plus Switches, because it's free. So, yeah, I, I just worry that if Nintendo is doing a power upgrade just to get their parties, that it's not going to work. Now, will it make current third-party games run better? Sure. A lot of them use dynamic resolution as an example. More mm-hmm. power means it's going to run at the higher resolution and, more often, or if not all the time. Having a little frame rate hiccups here and there, well, more power will make the frame rate steadier. Right. Maybe you can hit 60 FPS on some games right now. But if it's a next-gen Switch landing next year that already by the end of that year is so far out of touch compared to what third parties are trying to do now right. with the new-gen systems, right? 
Then what? <laughs> like I, I, I've argued in the past that like, well, play, PlayStation is an example. A lot of a lot of third party games that come to PlayStation Four kept coming to PlayStation Three for a couple of years. Mm-hmm. Sure, but if you have to downport from that to another Switch, mm-hmm. like you're doing two downports, they're not going to pay for that, right? Especially when yeah. they have all this money invested in next gen, mm-hmm. and you could be like, well, that's why we need the more powerful ones. So for the next two years, be okay. So now maybe over the next two years we, we get some games, but. Then again, we probably won't because what's been the excuse on or the common excuse why, oh, we're, we're getting some third party, like Mortal Kombat now, but we wouldn't have got Mortal Kombat two years ago. Well, games are on a three to four year development cycle. Okay, so we get the more powerful platform and just then they start to consider the Switch. So by the time we by the time we get that game, it's three to four years out and they're no longer making the old school versions anymore. Right. So now it's a next gen exclusive. So it's, it's, right. you're in right. this conundrum where just releasing a more powerful Switch isn't going to get you the AAA games now. They're just going to get them in two to three years, and by right. then, they're not even making games for PlayStation 4 anymore. Right. So I, mean, that's my yeah. thing. Like, Luckily, right. this conundrum where I want a more powerful Switch, and I want to see like what Zelda can do with that kind of power. Right. I want to see you know Mario and Metroid Prime and Pikmin, as an example, that, that mimics a lot of real-life objects in the game. Like I want to see what these games can do with more power. I, but Nintendo games never feel like they need that power for them right. to be great. No, for is, sure. They are prettier. For sure. Breath of the Wild, Odyssey, like they're all prettier. HD is here with Nintendo. Thank gosh, everything looks prettier except with Yoshi because Yoshi doesn't run in HD. Um, <laughs> but um, sure. right, it's still. I'm I'm just I'm kind of miffed a little bit at mm-hmm. as much as I want. There's been a lot of talk about around more powerful hardware. Not a lot of talk around what the hell is the point of the more power. Right. It, the only other thing I could think of too is that it, it's going to run the the triple A third party games that are on the Switch already better. Sure. Which may cause a spike in sales for the ones that are already out. No. You don't think so? No, because they are, those games are already out of print because they're not selling. The people that would be interested in those games have already bought it, so maybe they'll buy an upgraded Switch for the for the games they already own. But even then, that's just increasing Switch sales. That's not going to really do it for much for anyone. Like I want, I want a more powerful. Like I, to make it clear, I want a more powerful Switch. Give it to me now. I want it at E three. Let's play it. I want right. it now. I want right. it now. But like right. the reason I want it now is because I'm a techie right. and I want to see what Nintendo can do with it. But I have been arguing for about six months now. That Nintendo Switch is not selling because of third parties. Mm-hmm. And if it's not selling, well, I should say AAA third parties. So it's not mm-hmm. selling because of AAA multi platform third party games, then why does it care about power at all? Because if that if they're selling on the back of first party, second party, third party exclusive contracts like Bayonetta mm-hmm. and a whole bunch of really high quality indie games, then why do they need more power? I mean, I'm not saying never get more power, obviously, right. but but it's like why? I, I think there's other things that could more storage would be better. More, um, I don't know. Yeah, that's like the yeah. one number one thing that possibly has more storage. Right. Like, right. I want more powerful hardware, but I just want to make sure that it's being done for a reason that makes sense. Now, if Nintendo wants to say, "Look, we need more powerful hardware to do a better VR experience," that's right. Nintendo saying, "Look, right. we." Right. Labo VR is great. We have the next step for VR, but we need more powerful platform. Oh, mm-hmm. fine. Mm-hmm. Cool. But mm-hmm. I don't think Nintendo is that dedicated to VR. Because I think they would have released VR as a standalone thing and not made it Labo if they yeah. wanted it to well, really blow up. Because you can't even, it's not even a headset. So I, I know. But part of me is, again, wondering if they didn't shoehorn in Labo because they wanted Labo to sell better. No. No, because they showed they showed some concepts for that's in this kit like way back before Switch even came out. So they've had Labo, uh, and, and apparently they had a VR thing in the work four years ago. So like they they've been thinking about this for a long mm-hmm. time, um, and it just became Labo. I and the thing is, it's still not a headset officially because you can't wear it on your head. Right. So officially, right, you, right. People are jerry rigging things, of well, course, but. <laughs> I knew they would. I mean, come on. You can't tell me, oh, all the Breath of the Wild is playable in VR, but you need to hold it to your face. Face for three hours, yes. 
Like they don't expect you to play for three hours, but that's the kind of but, game but, yeah, you play exactly. for three hours. Yeah, you or sit down guess, and play. You sit down I, and play. Actually, for three because hours. it's in VR yeah. on the Switch, it's probably two hours of battery life that it actually has. But whatever. Possibly. Yeah. Now you, you say that I'm just yeah. going to put a hole in the bottom and put a battery pack on my chest and just, <laughs> just keep it. Powered. There you go. There you Polar go. Power. Yeah. Actually, honestly though, the next gen Switch thing, the biggest question for me is. Why are you releasing the Switch Mini in the fall, Pokemon. and then and then turning around and basically making it obsolete? Mo- obsolete because you have the next gen of Switch. It. <laughs> well, how long did we go with just a 2DS without a 2DS XL? I don't know. A long, I long don't know. time, years. Okay. Even though the 3DS XL existed before the 2DS did. Yeah. The reason is that the Switch Mini is meant for kids. That's the target audience is children. Yeah. A more powerful, avid gamer platform is not targeting children. So that's the, the logic is Switch Mini is just replacing the 3DS, not the Switch. Fair enough. $200 entry point. Right, right. Gonna, no, no, no. It's going to do baller. Sure, it's sure. going to do baller, especially if the alternative is a $400 device. Right. No, it's, yeah, it's very true. I mean... And if they're pretty much getting the same games, at least from Nintendo side of things, mm-hmm. it's still going to do great. Yeah. So yeah. It, it, it's it's one of those situations where I just want to make sure I'm I'm all for a more powerful platform. I'm I'm not one of those people that's scared and all oh, my the, Switch is now off. I own mine from day one. I'm totally ready for a new one. I'm not one of you guys that might have just recently bought one. I literally owned it from day one. I'm right. ready. Right. But I want to make sure that Nintendo knows why they are making a more powerful platform. Because if I, because I firmly believe they're not competing with PlayStation Four and Xbox right now. Mm-mm. Now, sales wise, you can argue they are, but they're not getting the same games. Let's just be honest here; it's not getting the same games. Yes, we get some. Yes, in I don't know a day, we get all. Everyone's gonna have you know Mortal Kombat Eleven. That's great, but uh, we didn't get Kingdom March Three. That went to the other platforms on in January. We didn't get that game on Switch. <sighs> It sucks. Sucks, but we didn't get it. And like, even though I've never played a Kingdom Hearts game, the vast majority of the AAA multi-platform games this year we're not going to get, and we're not going to suddenly get them because the Switch Pro exists. Because again, two to three years to even start getting those games on the platform, and by then they're not making those games anymore for these older platforms. So you're left in this conundrum where I don't, I, I honestly don't think uh, the next gen Switch is trying to compete with PlayStation Five and uh, and Xbox Two, at least not directly. It's trying to compete in a. We are the hybrid handheld home home console, and we are going to own that, and no one's going to be able to beat us at it. We're going to make sure no one does it better than us. And I could I could see how they want to have a more powerful one come out if there was competition for them. Mm-hmm. But there's like no competition in the space they're in. Mm-hmm. No one else is doing it. There's not another portable PlayStation coming out. There's not another. Well, no, that we know of. No, oh, they, they they literally said they're not doing it. Okay, so well. well they, I, I will believe it when I never see it. So oh, I, I believe it because Sony has already said that PlayStation Five is probably their last home console. Mm-hmm. They're they're going they're looking at networking. They're looking at streaming. Yeah. That's what they're looking at. So like, yeah. they're not looking at oh let's release even more physical hardware. I mean, we can just put our games <laughs> on everything. That's the yeah. future. Is get your games on everything. Yeah. Uh, so as much as you guys might hate that future, that that's kind of what we're staring at. But Nintendo's like in their own market. It's kind of like the 3ds. Vito really wasn't that relevant outside Japan, so 3DS is basically its own market without competition. Yeah. So Nintendo, I think, is starting to look at it. Well, look, it's Switch. Nothing does what Switch does exactly, so it's kind of its own thing. Yeah. So well, yeah, it's obvious it's its own now, thing. if they had competition, <laughs> yeah. don't get me wrong, there are hybrids like GDP, Win2, stuff. Like There, there are some, some that are out there, but, but they're so unpopular that it's not really a competition. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's like saying that Game Gear really posed a threat to Game Boy. It didn't. It was really cool, but it really was never a real threat. I love Game Gear. <laughs> I know you do. I love Game Gear too. But but as the point I was making, it was yeah, a really right. nice platform. It wasn't another yeah. PSP, eighty million units. Woo! What a threat to Nintendo. You would think. You would think. Except that generation, the DS did one hundred fifty million. Mm, no. You think Nintendo ever felt threatened in that gen? Probably not. Point is that Nintendo isn't worried about it because as long as it's a handheld that also does other things. Nintendo knows we do this better than everyone. And we yep. have a reputation of doing this better than everyone. So we're not direct. Like, I, And I think 
this is a tough pill for some people to swallow because Nintendo has been advertising Switch as a home console, home console, home console, home console. And if you're a home console, obviously you're competing with other home consoles, right? Yeah. But we all know the Switch is using portable tablet hardware. Right. And because of that, and because it, when you open it in the box, you're not holding a thing you plug into your TV, you're holding a tablet, it makes you start to realize that Nintendo might be calling it a home call console because of Mindshare. They want people thinking of it, thinking mm-hmm. of it as a home console. Right. But they know deep down, it's especially if the Switch Mini ends up being portable only, yeah. like they know deep down that, dude, like we're it's handheld technology and nobody does it better. Right. We're just going to yeah. call it this so we can get those avid gamers to maybe try us out. But, I mean, come on. Right. No, no one can touch right. us here. We're, we're just doing what we do best. Mm-hmm. So I, I, then that gets back to the whole. Well, do we really need the new Nintendo 3DS upgrade? <sighs> and to me, that's a different argument because the new Nintendo 3DS wasn't just about put. It really wasn't even about getting games, you know, that we come before like Xenoblade Chronicles to run on it. Like the, there's exclusive games or there's games that run better on it. But that that to me was never the point of the upgrade. Mm-hmm. The point of the upgrade was Miiverse. Miiverse on the OG 3DS was impossible to use, basically. Mm -hmm. You're talking, it felt like you're back on dial-up to do anything. Fun. It was bad. And the OS on the OG 3DS was already slow. So then the new Nintendo 3DS comes along with this more powerful hardware, and suddenly the UI is snappier. Suddenly Miiverse is actually almost as usable as it is on Wii U. Mm -hmm. Again, they had UI and base functionality of the system that needed that power for improvement. But you look at Switch... Everything's snappy. Everything works. Yeah. Not really any delays in anything besides just waiting for servers to respond. I'm just. I'm actually kind of wondering if there's something Nintendo has in the backs of their minds that they wanted to do with this original Switch. Well, and I've that they about that, never. Yeah. I talked about that before. How like maybe this Switch that we have now isn't the original vision. Right. It has a lot of the original. Like I'm. I have no doubt what the Joy Cons are is what Nintendo always wanted them to be. But right. I think maybe the Switch hardware and everything like, isn't exactly what they wanted but it's what they did because they needed something out right at that time right and i've it, talked about that but then it's like now that we have it besides fixing the numerous issues to talk about like the kickstand and like yeah, a zillion yeah. things like yeah you can redesign things and, and make a better platform but none of that involves better hardware so why do we need the better hardware it doesn't seem like it would fix any base functionality of the system because the base functionality of the system doesn't feel like it needs fixing it just needs more features but that's software. That's not a hardware thing. Right. I mean, there's some hardware things you can argue, like an Ethernet port and all that. But again, that's not how powerful that's, the system is. That's just an, it's basically an additional feature. Well, and that's also... Built-in feature. Built, that, built but in that's feature. also a dock feature, not an actual... Well, you would assume... I assume there'd be a redesigned dock. Maybe that's right. a bit presumptuous of me. Do you think it would need more... No, it shouldn't need anything more power-related for like having an, an Ethernet port on the dock. Mm-mm. So, I, I was thinking, maybe there's some, I don't know, maybe there's some feature that they just haven't announced yet that they need the more power for. Well, and this has been, like, and I don't, I haven't had this conversation. I've done, I've done a bunch of videos covering all the rumors and how excited I might be and what the power might be comparable to, but I've never sat there and thought, like, why? Maybe what th- is the benefit to us as consumers? It's kind of like the upgrades of phones, right? There's pretty much year-to-year upgrades of phones. There's almost no benefit to the consumers. That's why most people, I'd like to think most people that have phones, aren't buying a new one every year. They're waiting at least two or three mm-hmm. before they finally see a reason to. And usually it's because their battery is degraded, so right. the battery's not holding right. as well. That's always a big one. Or it's just becoming sluggish over time, which happens. And your then charge you, port's you dead. Get a new one char- yeah. Basically, the phones, Dying. these the fo- physical $1,000 part. phones are literally just failing. So the it's physical parts are just blowing um, up. Yeah. So... And, and obviously, yeah. anyone that's on those two-year contracts, you just get a free free phone every two years. So I, I look at this as a situation where I'm not sure what the purpose of the new hardware would be for. I know all of you guys are screaming obvious third party, but I'm like, I just explain why that wouldn't make sense. It, but my question is, is though, do you think it would hurt? Hurt third party? Yeah. No. Right. It's not gonna hurt. So, but if it's not gonna help, I, it. If it can't hurt, I don't see. Is well, it... hold on, stop. It can hurt. We're not taking something. One thing into consideration. 
let's say that they have dev units right now mm -hmm. and they're like oh cool we're gonna bring madden but we're only gonna bring it to this this new switch right mm -hmm. that means they have to forsake 40 plus million people that own the current switch and they're not gonna do that right so they're gonna have to now make how many versions of madden just to run on switch docked and handheld for the old school docked and handheld for the new one yeah like now you're talking about how third parties are, who are already struggling to want to bring their games over. Now you're telling them, oh, but now i got to support all these different Switches because I'm not going to not support the old Switch. And then if you're like, oh, if I'm going to support the old Switch, then I'm not going to do anything new with the new Switch. It's just going to be the same game. Yeah. And then they're not taking advantage of the power. Anyway, so it's kind of like left in the same conundrum where Nintendo hmm. might take advantage of it. Sure. Yeah. They might have a big, like the next Xenoblade, make it ex like, okay, they might take advantage. Of course they are, because they're the ones that made it more powerful. they got to justify the power. Just like they did yep. with the new Nintendo 3DS when they ported Xenoblade over. It's like, hey. Hey, are they finally bringing skins? The OS? No. <laughs> Themes. Themes. Themes? No. Not that we're aware of, anyways. Nothing announced. Hey, that's the the extra power for. Hey, they did I do an update 8.0.0 this week that yeah? did add a few features. Oh, yeah? There's now different ways you can sort your games. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's right. You were saying that. I don't like it. It didn't. It, well, the one didn't work. Yeah, the one that you sort by um, your most, you, know, you sort by play time based on the games you played the most top to bottom, it's wrong. And it's not wrong because, like, oh, I'm misremembering my times. No, you can literally go on my profile and look at my times and see it's not lining up correctly. It's not going from least to, to most or most to least. It's like, yeah. it's got my top three, like, in the top three, but they're, like, all mixed up. I and, think one's three, um, one's two. And I, and I have one. I have one that I have like thirty-five plus hours in that should be in my top ten. That's like down in the eighteens. While games that I've only played for like a half hour are up in my top ten. Yeah, and it's like this is not working. Yeah, this is broken. Yeah, this part, the, all the other sorting, but this particular sorting is <laughs> not working. Even my top yeah. three, they're the right three, but in the wrong order. <laughs> Right. Now, does that matter? No. Nope. I mean, I guess at least to recognize that, oh, all of those are over 100 hours, but it's like, yeah, something's right, not right Right, here. right, right. Um, Yoshi's Crafted World apparently is one of my most played games on Switch. No, it's not. It should not be. <laughs> I know I'm reviewing it, but it absolutely should not be one of my most played games on Switch. A more recent game I played, yes, but. Question for you. With the search function, or with that sort function, does it take into somehow, for some on weird reason does it take time played across all profiles no. it shouldn't it really shouldn't no it shouldn't but is that what's going on good question because i know your kids probably play a ton of yoshi's crafted world my my son has played a bunch right and if they just sit the if they leave the switch on and walk away that's three hours right there. No, they don't. They well, two they hours. never gets left on and marked away. Well, you know what it I'm dies. saying. You know what they I'm saying. Till it dies. You know what I'm saying, though. <laughs> um, but, well, you know, you know what might be a telling sign for that? Ukulele. Yeah. Where does that rank? Because my son, I think, has put 100 hours in the ukulele. I'm not even kidding. Nice. He can't even get our world one, but he doesn't care. There and Hiroki. Okay, I know he's that. probably put like 30 hours in Hiroki. Yeah, yeah. That's a fair question. Cause I want what what uh, see he doesn't care about his save. So if I delete their profiles, I wonder if that's going to change the order. I, another thing you could, yeah, yeah. Uh, another thing you could do is just create another profile and then just play for an hour, hour and a half, two yeah, hours. Yeah, but and just it, the switch doesn't register thing for like five days after you start well, a game. So okay, yeah. So that's not going to help unless I'm more really really patient. true. True. I think what I'll do is because my since my kids don't care about their game saves. They don't even save the game most of the time, so to be honest. <laughs> yeah, there's that. Um, I, what I could do is I can go and wipe all the profiles mm -hmm. and then um, reset up. To, well, I need to reset profiles anyways because right now it's like it's like Yulia and then Aiden. And then everyone plays under Aiden. That should just be kids. Yeah. And if you, yeah. I don't know, Yulia doesn't even need her own, to be honest. She yeah, just yeah. be under mine. Yeah. Um, but so, and and do that and wipe that all that gameplay off and just mm -hmm. see... If it goes back to what it should be for just me. Right. Because I could see how they would make that mistake of, you know. It's not even a mistake. It could just be how it works. Right. Because all the profiles are there. Right. But it would, you'd, that would, you'd figure it'd be Switch gameplay then, not profile. I mean. But yeah, all yeah, those yeah, profiles it just seems play wrong. on one Switch. I get that. But what I'm saying is, is that would it, you'd figure it'd be a Switch. Are these all Switch sorts? Like full switch sorts, or are they profile specific? They're not sorts? profile specific. 
So then I'm wondering if it's not. Damn it. You figured it out. Maybe. All right. All right. Let's move on to the next topic. Yeah. Because um, we're going to spend the whole podcast talking yeah, right? about this. Yeah. Um, so uh, Philip Mewson's back. Hey. Former plagiarist. So he claims. Uh, he used I to mean, be an editor at IGN, got caught plagiarizing for the Dead Cells thing, just as like a, mm-hmm. a Dead Cells review from Boomstick Gaming. Found out he plagiarized a bunch of stuff on his YouTube channel before he was hired by IGN that just wasn't caught at the time. He called out Jason Schreier saying he's never plagiarized anything before. I dare you to find anything. And then he found out <laughs> some stuff on his channel. The internet one. The internet one. You don't dare the internet. No. And let alone a journalist who was just calling you on your crap and offered to interview you, by the way, and you wouldn't do it. Mm-hmm. Um, and then issued the, he didn't even apologize. I might even call it a non-apology. It li- yeah. He literally never pretended it was. Everyone else called it a non-apology, but his video was not named anything about apology, and he never apologized anywhere in it, so it was not an apology. Right. More maybe an explanation, and the explanation he originally gave was, I did nothing wrong. Everybody everyone does Everyone does it this way. Everyone, from YouTubers to, to IGN, to everyone does it this way. Um, yeah. So uh, now I'm just getting a bunch of crap. Poor me. I'm tired of my family getting threats. I'm tired of this. I'm tired of that. But I didn't do anything wrong, so none of this is warranted, and it's all your guys' fault. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's basically the end of it. And then he tried to make other videos, and all those videos got dislike bombed, which, by the way, YouTube doesn't care if a video is dislike bombed or liked bomb. It all means the same to them. So really, you guys which, are kind of helping his videos. Which makes um, no sense to me whatsoever. But, uh, helping his video get spread. That's just how it works. So... I look at it as a thing. Well, except my, my most viewed video ever as Nintendo Prime has like a six, like a forty-two percent like to dislike ratio. Didn't matter. Go ahead and dislike bomb. You're just spreading my video. Yeah, that, that, that still <laughs> makes no sense. But, right, so, right, right, right. That's not what we're here so, for. So he came back finally after eight months. He he had his last video made was about three months ago, and eight months after everything went down, he finally released a two minute and eleven second apology video. In this video, to his credit, he finally fesses up. Mm-hmm. Um, he fesses up to the Boomstick Gaming situation. He fesses up to four of his alleged plagiarism things. He's actually been accused of like a dozen or more. Oh, right. Those were probably the four, four but biggest those are the ones. ones those are the ones that. that he was getting hammered for the most. Right, right. That's uh, And it's interesting because... If you're going to go out of your way to name those four, you're not going to acknowledge all the other ones? Yeah. Because then you're, not apo- then you're actually not apologizing to each person that you affected. In addition, okay, moving on, to right. even giving him benefit of the doubt. Right. Um, he then goes on to um, apologize to everyone at IGN, which, of course. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then I that's kind of where he leaves it, and he just says, oh, I promise never to do this again. You'll see I'm going to make nothing but original content moving forward. Um. For starters, the the first reaction for me is eight months, right? And someone said, "Well, it could have been legal reasons because maybe IGN was suing him." And I'm like, "This might be true," but his lawyer, first thing he would have told him is not to say all the things he was saying before in the wake of it in the first place. Right. That that other non-apology yeah. video wouldn't have come. That out. would that would not have flown with a lawyer. Lord, you can't do that. Right. You stay silent. We take care of this. Right. Before you ever speak publicly. Right. And he wouldn't have been making content still at his channel like nothing was wrong. Mm-hmm. So. Mm-hmm. Still, it, it, I'm, I know it, it's still a possibility. Something. I'm sure IGN pursued something, but um, the point is that I don't think that legal reasons are why it took him eight months to it, fess up. It's a possibility, and it, it could be just a very possi- big possibility Damn. that he had a really crappy lawyer. <laughs> it's possible, but even if we want to give him the benefit of the doubt that he couldn't fess up for eight months because of legal reasons, right? He didn't fess up to everything. He didn't apologize to everyone. He never apologized to Jason Schreier. God, he blasted Jason Schreier, and Jason mm-hmm. Schreier was right the whole time. Mm-hmm. And all these things that he admitted to were things Jason Schreier dug up. Mm-hmm. But he never apologized to Jason Schreier. That, to me, was huge. You acknowledged he was right on all of his accusations and on everything extra he found. But you would not acknowledge him specifically, specifically. when you specifically attacked him right. on Twitter when he wasn't attacking you. He was just mm-hmm. saying what happened, reporting right. the news. Um, in addition to that, you didn't apologize to all the other people you threw under the bus. You apologized to your ID, IGN staffers, but mm-hmm. you said everybody does it this way. You were accusing the entire industry of plagiarism. Mm-hmm. You didn't apologize to the entire industry. You apologized to IGN. Mm-hmm. So Nintendo YouTubers that you give a bad reputation to, like me, no, I, I'm still waiting for an apology. I mean, he did give a blanket apology. 
at the beginning, he did say he wanted to apologize to everyone that he has hurt with this situation. It's a blanket. It's a blanket. Sure. It covers technically, but yes, but then spe- wh- specifically, yes, he did not specify yeah, uh, out it, uh, some it, of these certain people. And the thing is, the only reason I say it is because he specified it in the first place. If he didn't specify who he was calling out in the first place, then I wouldn't care. Mm-hmm. But he specified. Every reviewer does what I do. Right. No, I, yeah, I, I know. Then you need to apologize to everyone. You don't have to do it by name. You could do a blanket apology to all journalists and reviewers. Mm-hmm. That would have been cool. It, not even, not even an apology. A redaction of that statement. He's not going to redact it. It's saying my statement of. I wish he would have addressed that video. Everyone does this. He didn't address anything. From well, that right, video. right, right. I, I get that. So. But the a redaction of everybody does it this way. It would have been, you know, a, even if he didn't apologize for saying that, yeah. it, just backtracing on it, saying not, I made a mistake in saying that it was heat of the moment. I'm sorry. You know, again, sure, I'm sure. sorry. Not everyone does it this way. So my thing with all of this is, if you can't tell, I'm not necessarily forgiving him right now. Um, and it's not because he didn't apologize to me. I really don't give a crap. He doesn't need to apologize to me. I mean, I mean he doesn't even know who I am. It's fine. Um, it's because not just the too little, too late idea because it's been eight months. Fine. Give him the benefit of the doubt and, and say apologize. Um, a lot of people, the reason I found out about this is because I saw people on Twitter and everywhere else talking about, man, good, you know, it took so much courage and this and that. And I'm like, courage to admit something that you're already caught red-handed doing? Yeah. Courage would have been admitting to things you plagiarized that we're not aware of. Right. You just admitted yes. to things that were already known. Yes. So the courage to admit that you did something that everyone already knows you did is not courageous to me. It is the only thing he needed to... Put it this way. He wants to continue to make YouTube videos, mm-hmm. but he doesn't want them to keep getting dislike bombed. I'm sure that he doesn't like that. He doesn't probably like his family getting threats. So... For him, like just on a completely selfish level, he has to make this video to keep making other videos and right. potentially get to a point where it's not right. dislike bombed anymore. So it literally could all be fake just so he can start making videos again and get back to normal. And a lot of you guys might be like, that's fine. You yeah. know, and, and, and that's fine too, right? Even if that's the reason. Mm-hmm. I think it's better this video exists than it doesn't exist both right. for him and for others that want closure. Although there are some people, like the people from Nintendo Life uh, that wrote the FIFA review that says there is absolutely no closure and I do not forgive you because you made a you know, bunch of accusations towards me and my mm-hmm. review and all you did is just acknowledge, oh yeah, I stole your review. Mm-hmm. You didn't apologize about all the crap that you said. Mm-hmm. So... It feels yeah. like an apology that is being made so he can continue to make videos. Now, I'm fine with that. Make videos. Do what you can. All I will say about it is this. What annoyed me is I saw all these people saying, we forgive you. You're awesome. Keep making that amazing it, content. And I sat there and I said, so wait a second. I know forgiveness and trust are not the same thing. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. You know, you can, you know, I, I, this is a dumb example I gave, I gave someone on Twitter, but like, say my fiance goes and, and, and cheats on me or whatever. I can literally be upset about it. She could be remorseful. She could apologize. And I can accept that apology. Mm-hmm. And I can maybe someday forgive her for making that mistake. But doesn't mean I trust her. Right. That has to be earned. And I think trust always has to be earned. I don't think you should ever just hand out trust as a benefit of the doubt. You should not meet... A new or, or find a new YouTube channel. Say you've never watched Spawnway before and you go watch one Spawnway video and suddenly you're like, man, I really trust this guy. No. What? You need to watch that content for a while mm-hmm. before you, this. That's my viewpoint anyways. Right. The, trust should always be earned, not given. So, because that's the way it is with relationships. You don't just like meet someone and all of a sudden I'm going to tell them everything all my life started to see like you don't that you don't want other people to know but like no you got to trust them and that's built up <laughs> yeah that's built up unless you're, you're drinking and well, yeah, right 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 yeah, yeah then you're not thinking straight <laughs> um but the point I'm making here is it's fine if you want to give him another chance be that person give him another chance the human race is all about you know second right. third fourth fifth a zillion chances mm-hmm. My only hope is that all of you guys that are saying we forgive you aren't also saying in the back of your mind, we now trust everything you're doing. We're going to blindly follow you again. Yeah. 
like that you're going that he's going to release a new video and you're going to stop checking to make sure he didn't steal it from somebody else Mm -hmm. because you know what was the worst thing about his non-apology video he made the entire format of it was stolen from another video about how to deceive people into forgiving you Mm -hmm. so like he literally plagiarized again to try to manipulate people and we're just supposed to forget this happened yeah and someone's already out there trying to dig up if his format on this one mm-hmm. was also stolen as a way to manipulate people. Mm-hmm. Because it was oh, yeah, yeah. it was scripted, but no, it, all his videos are scripted. Obviously. So that, that's, yeah, yeah. That he, he does scripted video. You could tell he was reading it. Right. Um, and I, I have no problem with that I don't, part. I don't mind that. You know, obviously in a serious situation, you kind of maybe want to write it down instead of trying to come from the heart. Because if you try to come straight from the heart... You might say something stupid. I know he can control it and edit it out, but it makes it just a lot harder to control. <laughs> it's easier to be concise and professional in that manner. Maybe some people don't want him to be concise. And pro- There's a lot of people that said oh, two yeah. minutes to apologize for everything you did. That's right. not enough. Right. Like, right. And like people, a lot of people have questions of, fine, you're sorry for what you did, but why did you think it was okay? Mm-hmm. Still not answered. Um, why right. did you? Eat, why did you think that everyone does it? Still not answered. And you talked about, well, I can be a lesson for people not to take shortcuts. What you did was common sense. You can't steal. Mm-hmm. You, we learned this as a kid. Mm-hmm. You can't steal. So, like, you're not a lesson for anyone. What you have, well, anything, if anything, you know what You know what lesson I get out of the Philip Mutrin situation? If you can steal other people's work and get away with it, you're going to get hired by a major publication and make lots of money and get paid for stealing people's work. That's what I learned. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I learned. And then once you get hired by the, and then, I'm sorry, here's what I learned. Steal to get to a high position, and then once you're there, stop doing it so you don't get busted. Right. Because he would have never, ever got busted if he wasn't still doing it when he was at IGN. Mm-hmm. He could have happily worked at, he'd still be working at IGN if he had never did the Boomstick Gaming thing or any of the other works it turned out that he also played right mm-hmm. at IGN. So, like, it, it gets to this point where you're not an example of what, not to do in terms of career success. You're an example of how to cheat and get successful. I Everyone knows you, you shouldn't steal. And yes, plagiarism, you know, college, uh, happens everywhere, but it's supposed to be once you get to that professional environment, you shouldn't be doing that kind of crap. You shouldn't be doing it then either. But it, it's it's mind-boggling to me that he thinks that he's almost trying to turn... I don't, not, he's not victim-carding. Uh, he, he definitely tried that the first time around. Right. Uh, but he is trying to make it out like, look, I made all these mistakes. I'm truly sorry. Use me as an example, other content creators of what not to do. And it's like, but they know not to do this. We don't need that example. Uh, yeah, we, yeah. You, we didn't need you to provide an example to not plagiarize. That right there almost again goes under the assumption that everybody does this. So use me as an example not to do this. We're already not doing this. Yeah, that's the thing. It's already not happening. For, I mean, it, 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 ha, it well, it's not the majority of things. At the happen. level he was right, doing it. At the level he was claiming, right. It that's again under the assumption that everybody and does then we, this. And, then, and most people, like someone said uh, in the comments on my video about it, they said, "Hey, you know, what's really the difference between you and him?" And uh, and I said, "Well, yeah, both YouTubers. You know, you don't know if I plagiarized or not, or blah blah blah. But here's the difference: if I did plagiarize." And I was caught red-handed. I wouldn't say that everybody does it, and I did nothing wrong. I would mm-hmm. just say I'm sorry. I plagiarized. I would. I wouldn't take eight months to tell you the truth. Yeah, that's the difference. And I can say that because I have gotten news stories wrong, and I've made mistakes, and I misquoted and missourced things sometimes, and I admitted to it literally within days. I haven't. You know the difference is I'm not busted for plagiarism and lying about it. He did. Yeah. Like. If you want to trust him because you view him on the same level as me, that's your prerogative. And I'm not saying that Phil Mewson's a bad guy. I don't know him. Right. I have no. And maybe this is why I can talk this way. And I think this is why I've seen people like Dreamcast guy talk about how this is such a, a positive thing for him. Well, they were friends, so I don't have that personal connection to be like, oh yeah, I know him, so mm-hmm. I'm I'm happy for him. Mm-hmm. I'll be happy for him if he somehow turns this around and still makes a career out of doing this YouTube thing 
and makes a following and never steals people's content again and ends up doing a bunch of original work that's amazing. And yeah, I'll eventually be like, you know what? It's kind of a nice story about how someone could make the biggest mistakes ever and bounce back and recover. I think that's a nice story right. that can inspire some people right. who might make similar mistakes at some point in their life. Mm-hmm. Um, but another person brought up, you know, how, oh, we should just, just trust them because um, like in when you're, you want to become a lawyer if they find out you plagiarized, it might take you three to four years of busting your butt to get back to you past the bar and blah, blah, blah. Okay, that's fine. But he but that, hasn't had three to four years, and he hasn't done anything. Like, my whole point is he needs to rebuild the trust. Don't just hand him that trust right, right back. Right. Watch his content. Enjoy it. He's a very good video editor. He's a lot prettier looking than me. <laughs> um, takes better care of himself. You know, takes better care of his body. And he in some ways, is very good at scripting. I suck at scripting. That's why I don't script a lot of videos. Mm -hmm. He's a lot better at it than me. Um, I don't know if he's better at research, per se, because he doesn't source anything. Um, It'll be interesting to see if he changes that moving forward since he never sourced before. Right. But uh, because, yeah, we all get information from places. It's important you let people know where the information comes from, especially if you end up being wrong. You'd be like, okay, well, it came from this place. Now I know don't use that place. And you're you're culpable. Right. Like, if I got all my information, like, I'm reporting on a rumor and I don't tell you where it's from, that makes me the source to that person watching the video because there's no, yeah. Yeah. how do you know any of it? Right. Well, people are saying, what people? Right. Where? You know, how can we trust this? Just because you're talking, like. Yeah. Right, right, right. And so there's a lot of channels that are like that. Um, yep. So. No, I get you. I wish him luck. I I don't want. In, you know, any more attacks on his family happening? Oh, I don't. I don't because his that family was it's never not, called for to begin his with. His family isn't part of it. You shouldn't really attack him on a personal level, anyways. A professional level, be my guest. Right. You know, you want to keep reminding him that he's a plagiarist. You want to keep bringing up the things he didn't admit to. Fine. I think that's all fair. That's fair game. This stuff happened yeah. publicly. Right. It's fair game. Private life stuff, leave alone. Like people bringing up the fact that he was, used to be a used car salesman. Who cares? Who cares? That has nothing that's to do his, with this. That, that's. His that's his that's his own business. You that, let him. He's probably doing that right now. He's probably back at selling cars. Like who cares? Possibly. I, you and I know you, people use it as an insult, but I mean, hey, I he's making a living. Cars. Like let him let him do whatever. Like it. Stay away from the personal. I, I don't personally think any ill will on him or think that he's a bad person because I don't know him. All I know is when it comes to his work on YouTube, he's gonna have to earn it back from me, and he should have to earn it back from you. Even if you're the biggest Philip Mutual fan ever, there were people defending him because he said he never did anything wrong. So they were all defending him that he never did anything wrong. But now he's admitted to it. So now everyone knows, matter of fact, he plagiarized. Yes. Many times. Because of that, we need to be wary of anything in the future. It's good he admitted to it. But you need to, don't just forgive him. I, you can decide when you want to forgive him. Or when you want to trust him. But make sure that it's after he's already done what you view is enough to not have to start check, rechecking every video with every other outlet. Mm-hmm. Now, not everyone has to do that. Most people aren't going to do that. But mm-hmm. there may come a time when people stop checking. And that was that will be when he's rebuilt trust. Right. If he can. For some people, he'll never be able to rebuild oh, trust. Oh, for sure. Because there are people that just, hey, look, once a plagiarist, always plagiarist. Yeah. So, and that's, I mean, reality is he, he committed one of the worst things you can do as a journalist mm-hmm. uh, and multiple times and denied it and attacked everyone else for it. Mm-hmm. And literally everything he has done along the way has been the worst possible way to handle the situation until now. And even then there's still questions of, is it sincere or is it a career move? It, because it's eight months. It wasn't an instant right. fess up. I screwed right. up. It was. After denying, after accusing, after none of this, this stuff and works, that. let's try this. Well, nothing else has worked. Okay, you know what? I'm going to take a few few months off to give people a chance to breathe, and yeah. then I'm going to be like, okay, hey, I'm really sorry. There's no excuse. Blah, blah blah. Like, okay, but like, yeah, that's what a PR person would say at this point right. too. It, that's kind of I'm kind of wondering if he didn't get advice from somebody. Well, I'm sure he's had plenty and, of advice from a yeah. lot of people, family and yeah, well, right, whoever. But, but like actual professional advice on kind of because it's scripted, you can always wonder: was it written by somebody else? Was it sure? Well, was I it mean, this, that's just like that? a lot of PR statements you get from but, players. It's like we know your agents and other people were involved, right? In that. And that's not. I mean, technically, it's plagiarism well, no, that's to a certain not, extent, that's not because but they not, represent you, right? 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 So that's not considered plagiarism, right? 
But so even yeah, if right. someone else wrote this for him, if it's representative of him, it's fine. Right, right. If it's literally written for him, yeah, to say, then um, yes. But, um, but that's the thing. People want to know that it's sincere, and right. you can believe it's sincere. And, and I'm not saying that it's not sincere. I, I I'm honestly, just saying it's convenient for him. In the video, though, I didn't get any tones of voices that made me believe it wasn't, per se. Well, that's the same tone he used it, in, in the last video. It was kind of, well, he didn't really use a whole lot of tone. He kind of, it was kind of just a flat. He, it's a serious tone is what right. it is. If you watch his other videos and you watch it, it's a serious tone. And he used that the last time he did a non-apology video. Mm-hmm. So it's like, okay, so it, you're, you were serious in that one. You're serious in this one. Same tone. That it, could just be who you are. But context or, or are you acting, of it too. Are you acting and just bad at it? The tone and the context. The tone with the the tone Personally, with the context of the last I video. I know this would have been really difficult for him because he would have had so many people blasting him. Um, and maybe he could have had some moderators, but I think almost he should have live streamed the apology and actually talked to people. That's, yeah. Yeah. Get it raw. Yeah. Get it raw. Catch him off guard. Yeah. See if he actually means it. Yeah. And it, that's just me because that's how I deal with it. Oh, people aren't believing my video? Let's, let's, let's stream. Let's talk about it right now. Right. All my accusers come at me. Let's go. Let's, I'll address you one at a time. Things get out of hand. I'll have a couple mods that kind of just make the chat not be... You know, like toxic. Blowing up and toxic. Yeah, right, right, right. right, right. Yeah, obviously. But in general, like, you know, I'm going to, I want to address everyone directly. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, if Boomstick or anyone else wants to show up, great. But I'm just going to look and like, you know, he could address the the tweets by the guy that said that he doesn't forgive him. And like, right. It's just, it's something that I think would have helped him out. It would have helped it definitely look sincere because you can't fake it then. Right. You can't fake it live. Right. That's, He's not that yeah. good of an actor. He, he, he ain't faking it live when new accusations come up or people, you know, say all these mean. He can't can't fake what he what he when he reads mm-hmm. it. Mm-hmm. And what happens? Right. So that I, I think that right. is what there is that what I but, think could have made this sincere. And he still might do it, but he's never been known as a streamer really besides Spawncast. Mm-hmm. So I wish him luck, and I hope he I hope he's for real, and I hope that he makes it because like he's he's too good at making content. I think not to make content. I just, I, I always wondered if he would have been best joining another YouTube channel and being an editor mm-hmm. instead of being the face of the channel. Because mm-hmm. he has skills that are still useful in this profession. Mm-hmm. But sure. it can't be his words, I don't think, at least for now. He's going to do his own stuff. He's going to mm-hmm. try to come back, and oh, I know for that. Sure. But it, it's, I don't know. It, it would just be nice for him to try to, re- like, let's let him rebuild his reputation before we just say, Oh yeah, he's good now. Everyone makes mistakes. I'm like he. This wasn't one mistake, right? We're talking about a series of mistakes over many years. Mm-hmm. It's the same mistake repeated, justifying to himself. It's it's okay. I mean, yeah. We need to then see justified and repeated time of no mistakes and doing it the right way for us to trust him again, right? That's what makes sense to me. If he had years of doing this, then he needs years of not doing it. I think that's fair. Yeah. Um, all right, so the last story. We're going to briefly touch on this one because it's... It, well, let's put it this way. It makes journalism like look bad again. That's what yeah. the problem with these two stories is I hate crapping on the field of game journalism. Uh, but a lot of people want me to do it because, yeah, they do make a lot of mistakes. But so do I. This mistake, though, is something that um, is borderline inexcusable. Mm-hmm. Um, not to explore it, but right. to oh, publish no. it the De- way they did. So, Def- definitely exploring this is is something that needed to be done. Yes. So, But here's what happened. Laura K. Dale, she is a writer for Kotaku UK, um, put up an article that accused the Persona franchise and Super Smash Bros. of including a song in the recent DLC that is um, harsh to um, mentally ill people. Uh, we're talking about the word retarded. I can't remember what the exact lyrics were that they claimed were in it. Because um, it didn't make any sense in the, in the no. way that they claimed it. But, yeah. but you know, and they, and they included the clip. And sure, if you listen to the clip you could infer that the word retarded is in the song. However, however, what wasn't done before publication 
is contacting the company who released the song to say, hey, what are the lyrics? Uh, what wasn't done before researching it was was figuring out who is singing this mm-hmm. in English. It turns out it was somebody who's native Japanese, so they have a thick <laughs> accent. Right. And so it, that well, accent could lead to mispronunciations. Right. And it not sounding perfect. And so that's another thing. Like that's why some people thought that this was like, maybe racist on their part for not understanding accents. <laughs> Again, you're kind of going in circles with that argument. But the point right. is like there was no benefit of the doubt. There was no attempt to confirm anything <sighs> or do additional research to figure out why this might be in there. Because here's the thing. This exact same song, this is the funny thing. Right. This exact same song's in the, the Persona game that was on the other platforms and no one thought anything of it. It mm-hmm. just wasn't sung by a Japanese person. Mm-hmm. So, like, literally, the accusation is a lyric change for Super Smash Bros. Ultimate to have retarded. Mm-hmm. This is basically what you're accusing. You didn't bother to look up the song lyrics on yeah. Google. You literally can type in the name of the song and look up the lyrics. They're right there. You can see other versions of this song that clearly do not say it, but they do say a word that, if it's kind of mumbled a little bit, sounds like retarded. You could have easily figured this out without even contacting Atlas. That clearly it was just the singer with the accent. Yeah. I mean, I haven't heard a clip of it. What, but was it wasn't the original re- retardando or something? It's a re- it could term. be. It, yeah, there's it's retard, mu- retardando, which means yeah. to slow down. Yes. Um, it's a musical term. Yes. Otherwise, there, there was another thing that said it might be retorted. Yeah, and here's the thing: this is according to Kotaku's article, right? So no, this was that that was a Kotaku tweet. Yes, well, yeah, but but, but Claiming, basically, what they're saying is they contacted Atlas. Yeah. Atlas didn't respond, so Nintendo mm-hmm. contacted Atlas, and then Nintendo told them, "No, it's not yeah, well, in there. That's not the yeah, word." Right? Of course, they won't tell Kotaku what the word is, and it's like because you don't need them to. The song mm-hmm. is all over the internet. Right. Google it. Yeah. So the point is that they threw up an article making a accusation of the Super Smash Bros. and the Persona series. So making an accusation of Atlas and Nintendo that they willfully put a song in Smash Bros. that is offensive to mentally retarded people. And that, my friends, is the uh, is it as bad as plagiarism? It's it's, it's up there. Yeah. Yeah, you didn't I, like as a journalist. You didn't Google it. You didn't. You didn't, you didn't bother to. By the way, this is Kotaku. This isn't me, a little YouTuber that won't get right. a response. This, this is, is Kotaku. This is a major news source. They can. They have contacts, obviously, because they asked Atlas to answer. So Nintendo, they got Nintendo's attention. Like, obviously, yeah. You ha- you could have you could have did more research and and got yeah. this story should have never been published. No, probably not. And yeah, they've redacted and done this and done no, that. And no, they, they, the original uh, article is still up, but there's now there's a note in it. And then go to the updated post and blah blah. blah. Okay, they, they actually have. They still don't really do a very good job apologizing because in the apology post, oh, oh my god. gosh, it's embarrassing. Go. Oh god, another non-apology apology. It, it's a, uh, it's a. Uh, we were wrong, but there's no but in this, by the way. We were wrong, but we don't know what the word is, and we still think it kind of sounds like it. So. That's not an apology. No. You were wrong. Done. You were done. You're <laughs> wrong. We will never do this again. Yeah. We will do Maybe. better. We care about our... Inter- and here's the thing. It's- I'm not trying to crap on Laura Kate Dale because she has been a pretty good journalist over the years. Oh, yeah. But when it came to this, it felt like there was an agenda. It did. And that's what sucks about this. And this is why people are starting to really mistrust games journalism. And it doesn't help. And this is no fault of herself, but it doesn't help that she is trans. Because people start associating, you are already something that people have a problem with, some people, and they think that you are even more likely to push an agenda, and then you do this. Hey, yeah. It sucks, but this yeah. is what I'm seeing on the internet. I'm like, oh, no, this, for sure. it's not fair, but this article wasn't fair. Right. It gave no benefit of the doubt. Mm-hmm. You didn't bother to check with anyone. Mm-hmm. And you, and it's not even just her fault. The editor let her publish it. Right. Because it goes through an editing process. So someone has to check everything before it goes up. Right. So. I, Unless somehow sidestepped. But no, I had no, no, that. No, 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 no. But all, like I said, these, I had a doubt All these kind of. Every piece of Kotaku. Just like when I worked at Zelda 4. Everything had to go through me. At Zelda Informer, everything goes through the senior editors, right? And then goes right. goes through the the Stefan Detilo uh, um, kind of detailed out that he literally approves of everything that gets posted. Mm-hmm. 
Like, there's other people that go through, but he's got the final say in it. So that's mm-hmm. why he takes responsibility. That's why the job of the editor-in-chief is you are responsible for everything. So you mm-hmm. must approve of everything. You must right. look at everything. And right. that, it's a lot of work. You don't have to do all the research. So you're not going to necessarily be fact-checking it. But you could easily look at this and be like, why isn't she but saying? Again, but again. why in this article doesn't say that she reached out to Atlas for comment and waited for comment? Where's the sources? Where, where, why, where is... She's, so the source on this is the lyrics she's hearing in the song, but where is the actual lyrics from the song? Yeah, that are right. publicly available. Right. How come we didn't talk? How come it wasn't brought up? Why we didn't talk about this when this song came with the original game in the first place? Right. For because all these songs came from other Persona games, mm-hmm. so there wasn't really a full in-depth research done. Now I'm not saying don't go attack Laura Kate Dale. No, attacking no. doesn't solve anything. No, be critical. Yes. That she didn't do enough research. But mocking her, like, that's not going to fix anything. No. What needs to happen is games journalism is kind of in this place where they kind of need to look in the mirror and start slapping themselves. What are we doing? Mm-hmm. And this isn't just hiring people who don't have journalism degrees. There's plenty of professional journalists out there that don't have journalism degrees. It's the process you have in place to currently publish an article is not good enough Mm -hmm. and you need to figure that out right because this is not a kind of piece that needed fact checking this is the kind of piece that you could just look at it and tell there's not enough research done it's not ready Mm -hmm. and if you're going to and and here's the thing another thing i think about is you know this is a sensitive topic oh for sure so especially if you are going to make a sensitive accusation like this you better be damn well sure you've Cross you have that dot in your you eyes. have it it is 100 like, percent real yeah like you cannot just you can uh, you can do it but you shouldn't right so that i think and, and again this is also not entirely laura k dale's fault because the other editor should have told her this should have caught this should have been s- like should have told her that hey look you, this is a nice start but now let's get the more facts let's actually make let's, sure let's, that let's we are do the research 100% let's, let's sure. google the song quick at least right See what right. it's supposed to be. Google who's singing it and, under, I mean, and try to understand the accent that's being said I mean, and how other words are probably mispronounced too in this song. I mean, you look at Blinded by the Light. Oh, jeez. It's, it's, it's clear as day, you know, what it's what what one word sounds like, but it's not actually what it is. And that happens all the time in music. Yeah. And in this case, if the word, if the original lyric is retardando, well, okay, yeah. Obviously, it or can even, come across, it can come even, across with, as the R word, like, or even I, I can understand more instead of retardando, I can understand more of retorted. But either way, either that one, way you can understand how just with the slight accent, right? It's no, not for a big sure. deal. Accents change the lyrics or change the sound of the lyrics all the time in songs, but mm-hmm. no one gets mad about it because they look up what the lyric is and it's not controversial. Mm-hmm. It's just not. It's never con- like mm-hmm. unless it actually is what I, it is. So I I just think that I feel bad in a sense that. I feel bad for Laura in the sense that she's getting hate that uh, that goes a little bit beyond what she should be getting. Critical of the work, don't not critical of the person. I always believe that you don't know her as a person. Critical of the work, not the person. Also, be critical of Kotaku the outlet for their process mm-hmm. for getting articles up. Mm-hmm. Clearly, someone failed her and yeah. failed all of us readers. Yes, and whoever concocted that response, just you can't apologize, non-apologize. On right. something you are factually saying you got incorrect. Again. You are factually <laughs> incorrect. Don't fill it muse in it. <laughs> Again. We go back to our last topic. I know. So, <laughs> I honestly, it's, I mean, here's the thing. I should be happy this happened because this is what legitimizes people like me because we can't trust game journalists, so why we go to YouTubers? Can't yeah. trust because YouTubers, most YouTubers aren't doing this, and the YouTubers that do, YouTube gets rid of. Yeah. So, like, it, it, it's it, it's kind of that world where <laughs> this benefits me, but it, I actually like game journalism and right. don't want it to go away. Right, I, exactly. A lot of the stuff I talk about comes from game journalists, so I don't. I think we can work together. I think that a majority of game journalists are actually really good at what they do. Mm-hmm. But, and again, this isn't me saying Laura Kate's not good at what she does, but yeah. this is me saying that clearly Kotaku has a problem in their process of how articles are done and how they are fact-checked, and how they are looked at before they go live, and that there's nothing in place to maybe do extra checks on a controversial topic. Right. Oh, God, yeah. And this just furthers the narrative that the reason those extra checks don't exist is because it's all the clicks. Oh, it's controversial. We'll get the clicks. Mm-hmm. It, and the thing is, is, it's one of those things that you can always apologize later. 
No, yeah. we get the we get the clicks now. That we've already we've oh, already benefited off. Then of we it. get more more clicks on the apology. Yeah, exactly. It's and one of we're, those and we're, we're untouchable. Right. Not really untouchable. Your company that owns you has been well, sold like four times in the last five years. Right. But I mean, we can throw it out there. Get the ton of clicks. Benefit from that. Yeah, you you you, you money your face a little. I mean, you you money your face. Well, but, and and it's always one of those. Oh, if it's too bad, we'll just let that person go. Right. Yeah, what do we care? We exactly. we got the clicks. Exactly. That's like, yeah. that's not that's not how this is supposed to work. And uh, by the way, I don't think she's actually been let go. Last I checked, she she hasn't been let go for it, which mm-hmm. I don't think she should be, because it's not just on her; it's on the right. entire process they have right. for these articles. Right. Um. Yeah, you can always point to how she should have did better, and I'm sure she thinks that now because she probably feels like an idiot. Mm-hmm. But, but, I'm not giving an excuse for this happening. I'm just saying that. There's multiple people at fault, and we need to hold the whole of Kotaku, especially mm-hmm. Kotaku UK in this case, because uh, I don't mm-hmm. think Stefan Dottila runs K- the Kotaku UK. I think he just runs the U.S. branch. We mm-hmm. need to hold them responsible for how they're doing their stuff. And yeah. this is the kind of thing, like, I've been telling people for years that Kotaku's been getting better, but then something like this happens. It's like, <laughs> you know, something like the Dead Cells thing happens. supposed happen, to be happen getting better. IGN. There's actually Come another on. embarrassing, oh, my God. I didn't even bring this up. Um there's an article at GameStop or on GameStop. Um, uh, not GameStop. Gosh, it's that other major game. See, look at this, GameSpot. Okay. I was gonna say. I was there's an, ar- there's an article it. on GameSpot about the PlayStation Five specs, mm-hmm. and in the first paragraph of that article, they miss put specs and technology terms like 17 times. <gasps> As an example, Lord. did you know the storage inside? Of a uh, PlayStation 4 is an optical drive. Okay. Uh, and they repeat that throughout the entire... They consistently repeat that the storage inside PlayStation 4 is an optical drive compared to the SSD that's going to be in the PlayStation 5. Okay. Optical drives not are not storage optical devices. Drive. Now, the CDs, you can argue, are storage because you have our data on them but it doesn't write to them it reads off of them and then puts it in storage mm-hmm. <laughs> standard 3.5 hard drives like we, we know what they're using so like yeah so you're they're using mechanical hard drives the right the proper term is the storage inside the playstation 4 is a mechanical hard drive yeah it is not an ssd so it's you're right. still right that it gets right. faster but it's not an optical drive and then right. all these mistakes and i'm just like why these are basic this terms is, yeah and I know that, like, oh, you don't even need to be a tech head to know, like, wait, an optical drive? What the hell is an optical drive? And go Google an optical drive. Oh, geez. Yeah. That's not what, it's a CD thing. Yeah. Well, that's not, what? No. I mean, yeah. They might assume you're right because people do insert discs. It has an optical drive. It does have an optical drive. It's not a storage device. <laughs> and it, it's just, I, right now, game journalism is just taking such a hit. Yeah. All the, like all the major outlets, and yeah. I feel bad for them. But I, what am I? Uh, I'm almost getting to the point that I don't know what else to say. You guys are just you're burning. Be your own, you are making you are making people like me relevant. I shouldn't be more relevant than people that have years and years and years of experience in the tech field with access that I can only dream of. <laughs> right. But me in my basement of my house in my homemade studio with. A table with stains all over it, and yeah. a bunch of random gaming collection that keeps having to sell the Switch games to pay bills. Me shouldn't be able to better cover this stuff than you. But I talked about the PlayStation Five specs on a Prime News episode and didn't make mistakes like this. Yeah, it's oh, my my brain just hurts on that one. I I. In fact, I already know that I'm going to be making a standalone video just about what's happening with game journalism in general, talking about the Kotaku, the game spot, right. the, like the right. IGN thing. And by the way, I'm not throwing it, like individual people under the bus. It's just a everything wrong with game journalism. I, I guess. Again. It's probably probably, probably okay. what, what the video title is going to be. Everything wrong with video game journalism. Wow. And it's not going to cover <laughs> literally everything, but Honestly. it'll cover enough things with enough well. examples that you can be like, man... Well, then, I mean, they can come back at you. And that wasn't everything. Um, oh, I'm going to yell that because you know what someone's yeah. going to do? Someone's yeah. going to go dig through the old uploads on my channel, and they're going to be like, ooh, you have a stolen video on your channel. Because I do. I do have a stolen video. See, look, fully admit, there's a video on, on my channel from like seven years ago 
that was a jacked video off of Kotaku. Ironically, oh <laughs> we jacked, or I should not even we, I jacked back then. Um, their Wii U video. They had a Wii U video on their website. Um, that was basically just a look at the Wii U. And I even put Kotaku in the article, and I linked I, in the video title, and I linked to their their article on it. So I, I gave all the credit, mm-hmm. but technically I took their video off their website, mm-hmm. which took me a long time to figure out digging through a lot of code, and I put <laughs> it up on YouTube. And now yeah. you'd be like, well, that's plagiarism. It is. The reason I did it, the reason that I did it, wasn't because I wanted to do it. It's because we wanted to show the Wii U on Zelda Informer. And their video was not shareable. It was not embeddable. And when you go to their website, it was broken in half of the internet browsers. Mm-hmm. I had to use like Opera. No, Nobody uses Opera. I had to use mm-hmm. Opera know. to play the video properly. So the thing is, that being the case, I didn't know what else to do to get people to view this thing. So I found a way through the code paste to find the original video file. I downloaded that SOB and re-uploaded it so people could actually enjoy the content Kodako created. And you actually so sourced it, wasn't, it too. It, and I sourced it, and, like, and that's and the, that's the I thing. I put them in the title of it. And I'm just like, I'm not trying to steal. Like, I I don't even think I monetized the video. I didn't want. You no, know, I know I didn't monetize it. So like, I didn't monetize it. I just wanted a way to show your work. I even even when we reported on it on Zelda Informer, I linked to you guys. I just wanted people to be able to see this thing that you really cool thing that you did that you just made so hard to see on your website. Mm-hmm. You guys should have been using YouTube back then for your video hosting. What do you uh, go to do? And I understand. I tried. I tried the, like private hosting and stuff. It was never. It never. It all sucked. It all sucked. So I just. And yeah. This is why YouTube's around and all those all those kind of hosting things aren't. So yeah, yeah. And Kotaku, to their credit, they they knew I had the video because I emailed them after I put put up the post, and they said they said it's all good. Back then. I don't know if they think it's all good today, but I don't think they care about that video at this point. And then, hey, it's got a lot of, it's got four hundred thousand views. Yeah. If they would have put it on on YouTube, they probably have millions. So, right. again, right. I was not I didn't make a cent off it, so that that gives me peace of mind too that I didn't make any money mm-hmm. off it. So even mm-hmm. if they're like, oh, take it down, fine, I'll take it down. I don't yeah. make any money on it. Who cares? Yeah. But the point is, is like I I could see like you you could dig through my channel and find that, and I get it. But you know what? As I just explained, there's a difference between intent. Mm-hmm. I wanted to share theirs, and they made it not possible. So I made it shareable. And but the biggest, 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 biggest thing, and the biggest difference is again, accreditation. Oh yeah, accreditation and sourcing. I've always, I've, you guys know, I'm big on accreditation and sourcing, regardless of where you get stuff from. Like even when I did, when I did my video on the Philip Musin thing, link to his video in the description. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I showed his entire video in my in my post and commentator on it and broke up the video in parts, but linked in the description. You guys don't have to go to his channel, but hey, that's what we're talking about. So you need to I, you shouldn't have to search for it. Here you go. It, and it also there are things that if people didn't trust you or anything, there's ways to edit things to make things look completely one way, and by linking to his original video. You can go see it in its entirety, unedited by you, un oh yeah, you know, yeah, the, unbiased, the, 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 un- and the thing whatever. Is, and you could tell, and, and I made it really obvious in my video too, because um, some people were like, "Oh, why didn't you make the video full screen and stuff like that?" Because I did it where here's the web page, here's me hitting play and pause on the video in real time with mm-hmm. no edits, and I did that because you could tell I'm not messing with the video right right right, right, right. YouTube yeah. for you if i had done a full screen version of the video and talked over it you, you don't know what i cut out exactly yeah but there's, here's there's this, ways to this, spin things this is when really i know easily. i'm going to show the entire video of someone because it was short mm-hmm. that this to me was the the best most honest way to do it where you don't need to worry that i'm just jacking his video so at the end of the day um i'm not saying that i'm perfect and i'll fully admit that that kotaku thing was not probably the right thing to do I didn't, you know, I could have just not ever wrote the report on it, to be honest. It's all the said, screw it. I guess no one cares. About it. Well, obviously 400,000 people cared about it, but I, but, but it's still, I, I feel like the only the big difference for I me, mean, yeah. I, I didn't consider myself a freaking journalist or yeah. a professional. Right. It, but at the same I wasn't point, even a too. YouTuber. I wasn't anything. Yeah. I was a guy working at a fan site, putting up content, 
that other fans might want to look at. The only other thing that you possibly could have did was wrote the thing and say, well, go here to look at it. Go here to look go, at go it, look but at it make sure browser. you use it in this browser. Yeah, this browser. Yeah. And they, if you don't have the browser, here's the download right, link. Right, download link. Yeah, I mean, that would have I just thought the, it was too much of a hassle. Yeah. And again, I told Kotaku, and they just said, it. whatever. Don't worry about it. Yeah. So, and maybe it was because I sourced everything, because I've always been big on sourcing. Right. Always, always, always big. It's so clear. I didn't, like, not, not my video. 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 <laughs> didn't mind. Like, whatever. I don't know. So, you go ahead and call me out on that if you guys want. I already fessed up. So, uh, the bottom line, again, what's the difference between Philip Musin and me? Yeah. You guys didn't even know about that mistake, did you? Yeah. <laughs> didn't even know. Some might have. But if you go to my most popular videos, you'll see it because it's got like over 400,000 views. Yeah. Um, that being said, uh, thanks for tuning in. Yeah. Um, it's been a lot of fun. It's been a very interesting podcast, a lot of serious topics. I think that the theme of this podcast Serious is, business? Oh, no. <laughs> just be better. Just, 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 be, just better. be better. I learned from that, that one. Everyone should learn. Yeah. And fortunately, it just feels like things are getting worse. For game journalism, anyways. Heck, can argue it's probably getting worse for some YouTubers, too. But I don't know. Just be better. Like, a lot of this stuff is just common sense. Don't steal people's stuff. Research the things before you make really, really hurtful accusations about other people or other games. Just, just go other companies. It. Like, I'm not saying don't report controversial things. Just make sure you cross your I's and dot in your T's. Make sure it's fact <laughs> before dot in your you... Dot and cross your I's. Yes. Oh, yes. Make, sure you, uh, make sure you have your ducks in a row and yeah. make sure it is Because what it is. you are making but, accusations in the case of, um, you know, the Kotaku article. You're making accusations that could hurt people. You're, you could make people with mental deficiencies suddenly hate Smash Bros. Mm-hmm. When it never happened. Mm-hmm. And that hurts Nintendo. It hurts them because then they're being lied to. Mm -hmm. So, again, just be better, please, for the sake of my livelihood. Actually, you know what? The worse you are, I guess the better for me. But but, but be better for the sake of just being better people. Golden rule it. Oh, jeez. Golden rule it. All right. Yeah. I think we're going to leave it at that. Thanks for tuning in, guys. It's been a lot of fun. We'll catch you in the next video. Podcast. Podcast. Podcast, yeah. Yeah. Peace.